right? Okay. That's that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So we're sorry, it's six oh one. We're gonna get going without sure. those guys. And Has then we'll just, heard from them or I'm assuming they're still in their meeting. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Sure. You did, this is, I just have them, right? Okay. Yeah, we do. Right here. Okay, so um, I gotta say the time because we're starting late. 602, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. All right. Good evening. Um, welcome to our new community room. Um, we are happy to be in here. Uh, we are a little echoey, so if you're watching at home, um, we are aware of that. And it is not te technical difficulties. This is what it is right now. <laughs> Acoustic uh, issues are being uh, addressed. Yeah. So, uh, also going to read our district mission statement. Uh, in partnerships with the communities, the mission of the Dilworth Lynn and Felton School District is to educate individuals in an environment of trust and respect so they become self directed, responsible, lifelong learners. Um, all board members are present this evening, as well as Superintendent Hempstead, um, our assistant principal, Katie Omen, along with um, our community ed director, uh, Tracy Tolleson. So, welcome. Um, we do have changes to the agenda this evening. We are going to be tabling our administrative contract. So 9.1, we are just gonna wait until the final three are completed and address it next meeting. So um, that is the only change, correct? Um, you guys did notice, we also added uh, 9.6 and 9.7 from last week when we shared it out. We wanted to make sure those bus routes were on here that we talked about with the contractors and then our LPFM. Um, it has to be by, done by the end of July and we do need the resolution I found out in July. So we're gonna talk about that today. Okay. Uh, and I'll share some information during my report. And so then you know what you're approving. <laughs> we'll talk about it, okay? Um, the resolution then goes in later this week. So I'll, I'll touch base more on that. When okay. I get so we uh, do we have a motion to adopt the agenda, please? Motion by Nicole. Is there a second? Second by Laura. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Um, public comments, rebel recognition. We do have uh, one uh, speaker today, Jeff Nyquist. So I'm going to let you come up here, Jeff, because it's kind of echoey. And we have our little uh, microphone right here. So you can just stand right here. Right. Amy's going to time you. You get, I always forget, five, five minutes. minutes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a minute left. Oh, okay. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, so I'm Jeff and I just, I'm with McClay County Attorney Office, and I work in restorative justice. And I uh, have been the restorative justice coordinator for the last couple of years. Um, what I'm here to do is to kind of follow up on an invitation that was sent to all of you uh, on or about June 27th. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of reiterate that invitation and remind you that it's this Wednesday and Thursday, Wednesday in Moorhead and Thursday in Hall, 9 to 11. Um, so here's the letter. Um, this is about restorative justice. This is something that we've been doing out of our office for the last 20 plus years with Clay County Youth. Um, this letter, I think, will cover some uh, gaps that exist. So, dear stakeholders, the schools in Clay County, the Clay County Board of Commissioners has awarded funding through the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 to the Clay County Attorney's Office to promote the version program to hire a full-time school-based restorative practices coordinator. For over 20 years, again, the restorative justice juvenile diversion program has been working with youth in Clay County to address criminal behavior. 
This project is to establish restorative practices in schools and would allow for a more holistic approach to addressing student behavioral criminal issues by creating a response to each incident that would examine possible school consequences, potential juvenile justice consequences, and the opportunity to repair the relationship that was damaged due to the student's behavior. The Board of Commissioners was compelled to fund this initiative based on research specific to pandemic-related decline in child and adolescent mental health, and increasing school-based incidents, as well as feedback from school resource officers throughout the economy. We invite you, it's an invitation to join the Clay County Journeys Office as we discuss our vision of partnering with Clay County Schools and law enforcement to offer a restorative legal approach within middle and high schools as those well fit in the We are offering two site locations for conversation circles and ask that you find time in your busy schedules to attend one of the sessions. What are you witnessing at your school? Restorative practices are used to build healthy relationships and create unity in school to develop a positive school climate, prevent bullying and harm, and to help repair harm. Restorative practices apply equally to everyone in school community to include students, adults, families, and community members. Is your school's climate for learning optimal? What are your concerns? With this background, we wish to invite you to a conversation that addresses these issues. And we're going to structure the conversation in a manner that will give you direct experience and exposure to some of the methods used in restorative practices, as well as share intentions regarding restorative justice for the new position and get your input, get your input on how best to proceed. Um, the letter goes on and it talks about funding. I'm not here to ask for money, but that, that's been taken care of. I mentioned that in the first paragraph. Um, but we're asking, the ask is really to, for you to attend the meeting and learn more. And then uh, we're going to ask to partner with school districts in Clay County to establish a referral process, provide space on a weekly basis. The coordinator would go from, you know, You'll inherit all the barn from the PDF to more uh, than five to uh, Horizon so they can be at each location. Um, so that's basically it. The letter goes go on. There's more to it. Um, it's probably in your inbox or, or you received a hard copy, one of the two. Um, if you have any questions, um, I, I guess I can answer it now. Is that correct? Outside of the coloring outside the lines, I, <laughs> it's more of a just a dialect, but yes, I mean, if anybody can you just mention the times again? Sure, uh, uh Wednesday, it's nine to 11, right? In Moorhead, correct at the uh Marriott, Marriott, okay, and then right. Thursday, and we have an admin team going to that. Oh, good, so we have our administration going, yep. okay, and um, but all school board members would love to have you, okay, um. And um, Thursday, so the next day, the 28th, in Holly at the American. So, um, All right. Well, we appreciate you coming to invite yeah. us in person, and uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I graduated from. Did you? <laughs> so I, Wonderful. So I'm a long time. <laughs> well, thank you for attending. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Can you hand that to Amy, please? Okay, so uh, rebel recognition. Anybody have anything? I heard the boys' legion team won last yes, night, they're so they're going to go to stage to for stage. summer ball. Um, oh, good for uh, baseball. Okay, wonderful. Uh, the 14 new girls finished yesterday in their tier in state softball, and they got fourth out of 16. So. Yeah, so Thanks. summer stuff's starting to wrap up and uh, school supplies are out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, great. Um, let's move on, 6.1. Uh, so we wanna welcome Katie Omen. This is her first activities director report. So welcome, Katie. Say, but I <laughs> All right, so um, she, she did hand us out yeah. a, uh, there is a handout, yeah. a handout yeah. here. 
So, uh, so yeah, it's kind of been the first, the first official month, I guess. Um, and I, so I just highlighted kind of some of the things I'm working on. I guess my main goal right now is really communi communication and collaboration. Um, working with the fall coaches a lot right now, trying, I don't know what I don't know kind of thing. Yeah. So working with them, they're helping me out. Um, I'm doing my best to help them out. Um, we did the coaches handbook. I think we had the second reading tonight. I think you've all seen that. Um, and I worked with, you know, Lindsay was on there, Shannon, to try to get something together because we just didn't have a guideline for coaches. Um, so I think that'll be helpful in the future. Um, number two, we did name our gym. Um, love it or hate it, we named it. And uh, that's, we, have, we have the fort. Did I lift them there? No, you didn't, but it was in your email. Oh, so you went over them because Ronnie went to that. And that's what I was thinking. I'm like, who wants to get this? Yeah, because all I think about, well, I don't know if you got it or not. The ones that yeah, don't I'm have kids in high school activities. Yeah, so. Um, so the fort is this gym right fort. here. The fort, yep. The fort, the fort yep. And then the old high school gym is the Rebel. And then the Glendon Felton, former Glendon Felton Elementary gym, is the Buffalo. And then we have, I hope everyone can keep this straight. Yep. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, I think it's fabulous. I'm so excited. New gym in Dilworth is the Depot. The former middle school gym is the Loco. And then the multi-purpose room is the tiger set. So we tried to incorporate tiger's den. The tiger set. I missed the one. No, I'm done. So you have the bunch of problems in the gym, right? So okay. <laughs> so the new middle school, the new elementary brand new gym is the depot, the and then the loco, the and then the tiger's den. Um, number three, so we have all our coaches ready to go. They're all hired for uh, fall sports. Um, we have a new seventh grade football coach, a new middle school volleyball coach, and a new middle school cross country coach. And never starting up in only a couple of weeks. So that's great. Um, communications, like I said, if you had a 712 uh, kid, you would have gotten this, but have been sent to families. There, I just sent out kind of a newsletter on July 18th that had the registration and paperwork. And then we're actually doing a physical blitz uh, just with legacy chiropractic. Uh, students can go in there, you're doing it for 50 bucks um, and get physical. And that's on August 1st. And there's a sign up for that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, and the communication at late activity bus info. I know that's always kind of been a thing that parents really wonder about. So Got that done. And then number five, we have meetings set up. So I'll meet with all the head coaches uh, for the whole district on August 2nd, just to kind of introduce myself and go through the new uh, coaches handbook. And they all have gotten it already. So they've been able to review it online. Um, and then the fall coaches on August 8th, uh, we have practice times all set in stone and things ready to go before school starts. So that's good. And then the parent and athlete meeting after the fall coaches meeting. Uh, new online registration. So we are doing a all new online registration to kind of cut down on the paperwork that's involved. Um, make sure it's easier to track to see who's missing what, um, when it's all right there. And so we have a ton. I think when I looked uh, over the weekend, I think we already have 40 students registered. We'll have a lot more. Um, I've only sent it out once, so I was kind of impressed with how many have registered and they're completely ready to go and paid and everything. So. That will also help with the payment and making sure that we have all the stuff covered. Um, all the schedules are up uh, on our school, so you can view them. And then also in that newsletter was direction on how to get notifications for our school, um, because there's a lot of features in there. I know a lot of uh, parents sometimes feel like they're out of, they're not in the know about activities, but it's all right on there and you can get notifications uh, for whatever activity you want. So I tried to explain that. Um, let's see here. Pickups. So gym storage. We're waiting for this gym storage to kind of be done on both sides so we can get stuff out of where we have storage now because the middle school football is now going to be here, whereas in the past it's always been in Dilworth. So we have to get um, all that equipment over here. So we're just kind of waiting to take control of these storage areas so we can get the FIED um, and all the other athletic equipment out of the current areas so we can move things along. Um, we're looking to get a shed moved over to kind of behind the softball field there so we can have some storage for middle school stuff. 
Uh, we can't move a shed right now because all the construction equipment is lying in the field, so we can't get a truck back there to move it. And gym's being ready. But I think we talked to Travis, and for the middle school gym, um, I was getting a little worried that we might not have a middle school gym for August 29th, but it sounds like we will have at least one. Yeah. <laughs> it's looking, it, it looks good. Uh, yeah, so questions for me? Since I'm done on all this, the yeah. art school, what is that? Or is that for anybody? Yeah, that's for anyone. So it's just on the website under activities and athletics, and it has all the schedules. Um, eventually, they'll have rosters as well. Um, but it has all the schedules for 7 through 12 athletics. And you can, can select which ones you want to do, which ones you want on vacations on. Um, it's just a drop down on the website. Yep. Yep. It's right on the activities website. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not a question, but, you know, thank you for the work that I'm supposed to handle. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. And then maybe the gym is Yeah. Oops. Mm -hmm. yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I know we're like, we can't always call it both. Old high school gym, old <laughs> mm -hmm. elementary gym. So, yeah. The yeah. Former middle school. Or yeah, I know. <laughs> I think this will be nice because, yeah. I mean, you probably have to have stuff behind it for a while, Absolutely. and then people will just yeah. know. And that's what it is like on our schools when we say we're thinking yeah. that we do have an FRNC thing. Yeah. So, and yeah. we'll hopefully have time eventually and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So. We have time. Yep. Thank you. Kara. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Tracy, 6.2 summer recreation report. Looks, I, looks like we had a lot of kids that were participating this summer. Yes, we did. Um, overall, I'll um, just touch base on a few things. One, with construction, we really had to be flexible on where activities were. So when we put out the brochure, we truly put Linden or the or gym. The week before an event, we would let them know, okay, it's gonna be here. Um, we just had to kind of keep it that way until we got to the week before and knew where we were going to play. <laughs> so overall, a lot of our activities, um, um, the classroom things were held over in Dover this summer. Um, it, it just made it a little bit easier with all the construction going on at this site. Um, so we had a lot of the on-site classes over there. Uh, we did a lot of our actual um, ponytail, um, uh, Kiwi. This year, you'll notice on our on our programming, we didn't we didn't host a, or offer a little league program because a lot of the kids that are in that grade level are doing a lot of night games um, and they're playing with the athletic club. So a lot of them it just probably gets too much for a family to do both day and night. So we weren't able to field a, a little league team, but overall we had um, a lot of participation. Um, and a lot of our fields um, were, were quite busy. We did host again this year a ponytail softball um, tournament. Usually that's always done in Holly, but we split it with Holly this year and we're able to host again this year in Dilworth, which was really nice. Um, we saw a big increase in our driver's ed enrollment this summer. I think a lot of families are taking an opportunity in doing 10 days at three hours at a time and they're done instead of 31 hour block. So we might be offering three sessions next summer just because it's putting 40 kids, you know, 35 in the classroom, it gets to be a lot. Um, so that's one of the things um, we've talked about. So a um, lot of busyness. Um, I did mention to Shannon, one of the things um, I wanted to touch base on a little bit down was one of our new programs that the district is looking at. Um, but before I get into that, anybody have any summer rec questions before I jump into that? Won't take me too long. If you think of anything, let me know. Um, Rebel Kids Care has been very, very busy this summer. Um, parents, the one thing that we do is if a parent signs up for summer rec, we had uh, over 90 kids in Rebel Kids Care this summer. At any given time, we could have 55 one day and 67 the next. Um, but what we did internally is anytime we looked at our complete roster and every day I would bring a list to Rebel Kids Care in the morning and say, okay, here are the kids that are coming today, but also of these kids that are coming, here's the list you have to bring to softball, here's the list that go to art camp, here's the list. So it was a lot of um, just tracking. So um, it worked very well. No one got lost. 
<laughs> um, but it was it really worked well, and I think the parents appreciated it because they didn't have to come to us and say, "Can you bring Jimmy here, here, and here, and here?" We took our internal data, created reports, so that we knew every day where those kids were going. So hopefully, you got some good feedback on that. Um, staffing has been fabulous. We staffed this summer with four adults, and we have about ten to twelve students that helped out. Um, been great um, so that that's been wonderful for us the one thing that we're doing a little bit um, different for fall and as we go into summer we're trying to focus a lot on priority levels for our rubber kids here where um, we're trying to prioritize those full-time students to get them in because otherwise we hold this spot for this one day and we find that parents are willing to pay for the five days um, if they were to come before and after school, um, five days a week for each kiddo, um, it is $70 for the week. And they have a spot every morning and every night um, um, for the week. So we've had a lot of enrollment. You'll see right now for fall, we already have 94 tentatively signed up for fall. So now our next question is, yeah. Yeah, it'll be okay. What other room can you use? <laughs> so overall, that's a good problem to have. Yeah. Um, but um, so that's where we are with that. The other thing that I think we are excited about, I'm probably going to speak a little bit for the admin team. Um, this last winter, um, we chatted a little bit with a gal by the name of Heidi Domeyer. She runs a uh, Central Cast Treehouse. If any of you get a chance, go out and look at their webpage. Um, it is a program that they run with um, Castleton Schools, and it is a, a program that works on the social, physical, um, and needs of the students. Um, so what that means is when the kids um, in the community might not have food, they might not have school supplies, they might not have feminine products, they might be in mental health crisis um students can go out to that an app or to the web page and say i need help um uh, i don't have food i don't have um shoes to start the school year i don't have a backpack or i'm in crisis mode um and they go onto the app and that app triggers them um an opportunity to connect with personally in the FM area. It allows them to connect directly to a counselor here within the district. Um, and it is a phenomenal thing that they've implemented in their district. The admin team has met with Heidi, who her and her husband both work for Microsoft, who created the app. And um, we met with them, looked at it. And with that, myself and Mrs. John, are working with um we've met a few times with uc hope and if you were to look at um the web page that we have down below we want to um, allow you an opportunity to go out and look at this web page and what it will be is the district has dedicated two spots within the school one in dilworth one in glendon um in glendon it will be the office i'm currently in now and when we have students go out to this app and say, or this web page and say, I need a backpack. I don't have shoes to start the school year. Um, our goal also is kids might need haircuts. Um, they will go out to this web page to fill out my name, my phone number, um, and my locker number. And us, along with UC Hope, are working together to meet the needs of those students. We will get to there we select people within our district um that will get these um alerts saying we have students who need something um and we will go to our store you see both rebel store and fill these orders it might be partnering with mr o'keefe and some students to say can you fill this order there's no um when we get the request all we have is um the lunch number so we might have people help us fill these orders, and then we will literally notify them that your order has been placed in your locker. Um, it is wonderful. I mean, kids who need a coat, they would put in a request, and we would fill those needs 
and um, UC Hope would help us fill those needs. They're going to help um, from a financial standpoint, um, from kids who might need clothing, um, food, anything like that. I just encourage you to go look at our webpage. It's just a draft right now. We haven't put anything live. Um, but it's now, now that we've kind of got the foundation set, we'll go back and work with our admin team and say, okay, once we get the request, who will be the counselor um, that will filter these um, so that we can determine where they need to go? Um, everything you see both know is nothing of our student database or anything. All they know is it's this student's lunch number, and we might work with Katie at high school, middle school, and say, okay, this order um, is ready to go. And our goal is to fill every order within 24 hours. So go out there, look at this web page, and just see um, what you think. Um, the, ne the next leg would be the, the piece called fifth quarter, which would then be the social things that it might be after a game, four quarters in a game. Now we want to provide events within our district. It might be a dance after a football game. It might be um, something that we come up with that could be activities that they could do to keep them from making choices that might not be healthy. Um, so we are super excited um, to get this up and going, but we want your feedback. And um, I know that um, Carrie Peterson, Connie Oshner, Cindy Hendricks, and myself on this jump. Um, Angel Ockley will be one of the counselors, and we've uh, pulled in Katie Oman as well, um, so that all sites are represented and um, all the needs for the students are met. This website shows all Yes. The other thing that what with UC Hope is um, we're also going to have that Amazon wish list. If you were to go out right now to say the Central Cast Trio, they actually have it out there where parents can go out there and buy things and they ship right there. So we will do the same thing. People can, in the next probably week, the goal is to get this open so that people can make donations. They can um, um, buy things to stock our store because you will literally walk in both of our sites and there'll be plastic clear containers where you can literally go and say, okay, I need new socks, I need a pair of size nine shoes, I need this, and we'll be able to meet those needs. So it's super exciting, um, and I think it'll it'll help a lot of families. So, all right. That's awesome. And I think that's it. Yeah. I was able to attend the meeting that Tracy talked about with UC Hope and uh, and the CAS Central CAS group. It was very very impressive, very impressive, and uh, it, it's something. What's nice about it is you start to go, oh, is that going to work? Is that going to work here? Is, when you have somebody that's already done it and had a positive experience, and it's uh, a smaller community than we are, you go, okay, if there's a need in that, and they're able to fulfill it, we for sure will be able to. So it's yeah, I'm encouraged by what can happen. Yeah. And on their webpage, the Central Cast Treehouse, you can actually you click on one of the links and it tells you how it'll start almost a treehouse. Um, they're mm -hmm. a treehouse because they're the squirrels. Yeah. Um, you know, but <laughs> overall, uh, it really walks you through how to start it. And so we just took that model and said, it's working for them. It's going to work for us. So um, I think it'll help a lot. So That's awesome. Do you think of anything that can involve us? Thank you, Tracy. Yeah. All right, 6.3 board committee reports. So I would like to get to uh, then after the last board meeting. Um, we didn't have very much community again, the people took that budget. Essentially, um, where we ended up for 21 points were uh, right on again. Um, and I think. And probably have more on that today. I don't, uh, we talked a little bit about the administrative contract and the demand working through those, um, but we really didn't have a big update there. And then we also talked about our construction budget and kind of where that's at. And yeah. still in a good place right now. And yeah, we, we, the construction budget, I mean, there's uh, all those difficulties in construction, right? Um, but we are looking really good. Uh, from, from what we have at this point in time. And so uh, we have no, no alarm bell tickets. Yeah. Okay. And 
Yeah, and the one thing I do want to talk about real briefly with the budget is if you notice tonight in your uh, consent agenda that we're still showing it's kind of a wrap up of last year. Uh, so it's if you look at if you looked at your consent agenda, the budget that we shared, because the new 2022-23 budget has not been entered into Region One's account yet, Marcus is getting that uploaded, and that will be so our next meeting will show the new budget. So if you look at this one, he was able to close out everything now. We thought, you know what, let's show you the actual closeout and then like 1.8% over maybe, 1.8. Um, he also said there's a couple revenue things that he still is gonna come in and shift. So he said it's almost gonna be, he feels almost a dead wash. Our audit is in September. And so we'll have a closure to it for sure. But region one wasn't able to get it. We weren't able to get it all loaded up yet. so. We wanted to give you something and he had a few other things that happened uh in june that we wanted to make sure were reflected at the board meeting so okay question on that not to pick on crazy but why do you know, sort of sits where all that extra money you know, and reason for the bad one being over well so uh part of that is and so when you look at that percentage i think it's the budget didn't know what was going to happen and Rebel Kids Care wasn't in the budget. Yeah. So the budget got tweaked pretty significantly because that wasn't even in there. And so mm -hmm. as we know, Rebel Kids Care has kind of exploded. So that was a big part of the change in the budget because it wasn't even identified. Which we were under last year too, but some of that could be depending on how it shifted in which year. A little bit of that, yep, yep. Um, so this was Marcus's first year too in, in coding everything. So we had a lot of discussion this year about how that should be coded and where it should be coded to. Then we had some things to change. Rebel Kids Care just comes to mind because it was a big significant change that we didn't have budgeted. So yeah, I hope that answers that. Okay, any other board committees? Do you guys want to go over yours or? Gonna email later. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys want to talk about your committee you just went to, or which? Are they, yeah, because it's up to you. Or you just met, so if you want, you guys to talk can email time, and talk about it next time. I mean, the committee we Amy and I are on is what's the official name? Ground credit, credit, credit. I guess, but. We were kind of talking about we only get things that are maybe questionable that can be approved right away. So then we go through and decide whether they're approved or not. So our discussion tonight was what types of programs or online classes are going to be approved or how many. And I think it's a Okay. It's again to Brittany's point. When I look at them, I go, eh, I'm not sure. Um, when we looked at the contract last year, okay, so what if I'm not sure? What do I do as a superintendent? Mm -hmm. Or I'm not confident or comfortable or whatever. Uh, there's a committee. And so I appreciate both uh, Brittany and Amy for doing that. Uh, Marianne Martin is the admin on there. And then we also have Mary Mahar and uh, Todd Bergeson are on that as well. So that's the team or the committee. And yeah. just you guys have spent, I think, a fair amount of time on it. So. Um, from my desk, I really appreciate the time you guys are putting in. I really do. So, yeah. All right, great. Let's move on to 6.4, superintendent report. Yeah, so just so you know, there's a couple things. I do have a D and an E because I want to talk about, as letter D will be LTFM. I have some information I want to give you in chat before you have to <laughs> pass a resolution. So I want you to look right. at that. Um, and then E is just uh, nothing too major, but an MDE, a safe return to school. Call it a hoop, call it a whatever. We have to do a safe return to school and a survey and whatnot. So I just want to briefly share on that. And Tracy and I, I'll have to meet with her. What is that survey going to be? What's that going to look like? Um, and so we'll do that as well. So uh, first thing I have in there is the MSEA negotiations. Uh, there's some been emails back and forth with Evan Mapes who is their representative. We are still working on a, trying to find a schedule and a start and a meeting date. Um, we have a personnel committee meeting after this board meeting. So I'm hoping that we can get some dates and 
like we did before we set up some Mondays. I want to share that back with him tomorrow, whatever we come up with. And so then we can start to get him scheduled. Um, he has not reached out. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. We've had an email train kind of going back and forth in regards to that. So that's where we are there. Uh, transportation update. You know that we've been meeting with contractors. Uh, Pender uh, Transportation was here at the last board meeting and, and shared there. Um, we, Eileen and I did meet with them again last Wednesday, I believe it was, Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, talk more about what was presented at the last board meeting and uh, did have the discussion as to that's all, as the superintendent, that's what I want to recommend to you guys that we're going to do. Uh, one thing in that um, report, I guess, or that that we shared last uh, board meeting was that um, Setters had a uh, shuttle route for morning and afternoon that was showing up on that paper. It was 11000 some odd dollars. That shuttle is going to be needed right away because we're not sure if we're going to need it. So we've already penciled it in to start the year with it. Eileen and Keith are both confident that we're going to need it. So then that took their percentage back to around the 30%, which made me feel better because otherwise they had a lot of their percentage of loss was higher. Now with that back in, it's not as bad. Um, so that's also a resolution here tonight. I told them, we talked to them uh, about that. Um, there is some concern still out there and I get it. But at the end of the day, we also have to make a decision and move on so Eileen can get things organized and set up. So it was an overall, and I shared this with the weekly update. It was a good meeting. It was good dialogue. It was good conversation. So anyway, I want to make sure you do that. The second thing, and I have some stuff here to hand out. Um, this is we met with uh, Metro Cog. Make sure I say it right. Um, so what do we got here? One, two, three, four, one, nine, I'm sorry, I should have one slide right there. And I think there's one for you there. So there's a map that you're getting there. And then the second sheet is going to, it's easier. It's on the back of your picture too, but to flip it over, you're going to get a headache. So I, put, I printed the back on here again, so you can look at them both at the same time. Um, we met with Metro Cog. They're the ones that we uh, are chatting with about our safe routes to school. We expanded our walk zones. We've affected our bus routes, our lack of busing or less busing. So they are working with us uh, in Glendon and in Dilworth, uh, what that might look like. The other thing that we've been meeting, we met with Clay County Sheriff. We met with uh, and their department with our new SRO that will have uh, Val here at the high school, middle school as well as Justin Vogel, the Glendon uh, police chief. We're worried and concerned about what do we do here when school starts? How do we drop off kids? Where is the safe space? Where are the buses go? So when we met with Metro Cog and Dillworth, we brought this up like, hey, could you guys come and look what we're thinking with Clay County Sheriff's Department and Justin Vogel and just our transportation and our admin team does this seem safe? Does this seem like a good plan? What do you guys think? So they came out, I want to say Wednesday morning, and then we walked this whole area, showed them what we were planning. They liked their idea. This is their report back to us, basically putting on paper what we said we wanted to do, which was really nice for, of them to do for us as they're going through this whole plan. So I, I want to get this out. Um, to our families, so they know how this is going to go. The sooner or communication is key. You can see that at the north end of this building, of the Glendon site, it's going to be two way traffic just into that north parking lot. So, parents that were here last year as elementary kids, or whether they drop off and pick up, they can still do that. The one thing that's vitally important, uh, I guess, was for me, and not just me, it was a bunch of us, is that we have one entry, one entry point in this building. If you've seen any school shootings, any, it's because people can get in everywhere. And we're going to lock the place down. So the issue with the drop off on the north end is their kids can have to walk a little bit to the middle of the desert. It's just what it is. Okay. Um, but it also gets them out of the way so it's safe for our buses to come in and drop. So 
If you look at that map, that yellow section, I printed it in color so you could see it easier. That is just going to be one lane right down the middle. It's going to have cones on either side, so only the bus can drive down the middle of that, and it's a one way for the buses. It's going to be painted yellow. It's the bus loading zone. And if you notice the arrows, it's heading south. And there's a reason why it's heading south. It's the train tracks. We can't get out of here at the end of the day. We can't get out of here in the morning. It's just a bottleneck. Uh, the Clay County Sheriff's Department said it. Justin Vogel said it. Metro Fox said, you can't go out that way. So it's going to head south. So it's the opposite direction as what was drawn. Um, which So some people are going to get worried because we met with the bus contractors too. They're going to let kids out on the right side. Kids are going to have to walk in front of the bus to go into the school. But all the buses are going to sit there. They're going to wait there. They're not going to move there. And they're the only people that are going to be in this whole area because it's all painted yellow and they're right in the middle of it. Kids are going to go out, middle school, high school in the morning. Now all the elementary kids are going to come up and load into their shuttle bus. All buses are going to leave at the same time. So it's not like, oh, I'm full, I'm taking up. Nope. You're all leaving at the same time. Are we ready? Are we clear? Do we have everybody? Nobody's walking anywhere. Yep, we're clear. They all go. They'll head south, they'll get here, that gives them time to turn around and get lined up on Park Avenue if there is a train. But they can all go together. So safer, smoother, better. You notice the south end, right where we are tonight, that is also going to have two-way traffic. So you can zoom in here. Here's why that's very important. After activities and the football game, they can go north or they can go south, they can get out of here quicker. High school kids after school can go out the north end or they can go out the south end. Divides them up, gets them out of the way. And these were vital pieces for both law enforcement groups. Don't have them bottleneck. They'll be ramming into each other. They're going to rear end each other. Let's give them two ways to get out. So in the morning, same thing. They could come in on the north end and they can access that parking lot from the north end. They can also ask to access it from the south end. And it won't bottleneck the traffic on Park Avenue. So, so we're going to have signs out here that says bus loading zone. Are we have that already? Not yet. So we have so, some bus sign. Up well, there. you do, but every sign we've already walked that to. Okay. And we're going to take all these signs and we're, some have to be just looked around. Um, we have some stop signs that we don't need, but we need somewhere else. I think there was like two signs we needed. Otherwise, our signage, we're just going to shift it, move it. It's going to be on stands. So, so like this bus loading one that mm -hmm. you were just looking at, it's going to be flipped around. It's going to be on a stand with sandbags because it's going to be in the street. Mm -hmm. So the bus loading zone, so there's no other way to drive through other than a bus coming at you. So that's going to block that traffic, basically, except for the bus down the middle. So uh, Ryan and Brian and Justin Vogel, we walked it. We looked at all of our signage. We made a map. They are already getting an over. So, yep. Yeah. So evening activities that there'll be nothing going down the middle of that street. Anytime? Correct. Like yeah, so that so we we did have some discussion on that too. Right now they can act they can leave the north end and they can leave the south end. And in, if you go down the middle, there is no way out there anyway, because like we use some right now. That's the sidewalk, and that's just for pedestrians, like right where the main entrance is. Mm -hmm. Because in the summer they haven't finished it, so we drive. I've been using it too, but that's going to have a pedestrian sign right in the middle. That's one we're going to order, so they can't drive through there. Okay. So when you're here in an event, you can't get out through there anyway. You have to come down to this end. Well, if you're right here, you're going to go right out here. If you go to the north end, you'll go right out the north end. So that whole area should be. Shut down. So there'll be a crosswalk coming across right into the new entrance, right? Past the bus loading area. Yes. You can yeah. still come through the demo parking spot. To walk, you can. To walk, yeah. Yes. The, the walking area. areas are all going to be there. Yes. Yep. Yep. So just want you guys to look at that, uh, see it. Uh, again, Metro Cog, this is, they agreed with us. So then they put it on a nice map for us to share. Uh, Clay County Sheriff's Department's on board with this drawing. Hopefully you guys are too. 
So we're not doing G where they have G's here. We're not going to open those doors. They have to come up to the secure entrance, right? They do. Yeah. Yep, they so do. No so G. it's a little. The G's. What is G saying? It just said it recommended ideally one or more of these doors would allow for students to enter. No. The yeah, they said that. We said no. I don't want because here's the problem with those G's. If they go in those, we instantly have kids all over the building. Yeah. And not only that, who else? We don't know. We yeah. just won't know. I the agree. only time, I guess it's F, I think. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, okay. After school, you'll notice we are saying kids can leave the building out those. So if parents want to line up on Park Avenue, at the end of the day, if they want to go right up to the parents, mm -hmm. they could do that. Okay. Um, the other thing is sports teams. So let's say uh, we play Holly. Holly's coming into town with their bus. They are going to park right on Park Avenue. There's a little swing out for them for their bus, and they're going to come right into that new entrance that is not quite done. They're working mm -hmm. on it down here. That's going to be for all teams we play. So their buses will always be parked out front, and they won't have to figure out and mess up parking. We won't back have to here. drive, yeah, drive around them. That's right. a good idea. So that's our plan there. Um, mm -hmm. Is that they'll drop out there, and their bus can always stay there, and there's not people all around them running into them. Yeah, nice for their bus driver too, and they leave. It's like. Nope, nobody's around you. Just get out and go. So, so basketball games tonight is that south door open for people to come into the new gym? It's no, they have to enter here. Right here. He's just talking about teams with access. They would yeah, come in. I was talking about one time we said everything was coming into the theater and everything through that new south entrance. Right here. Oh, right over here. This one? This is the new south entrance. Yeah, so is there another one right here? Yeah. Yep. This is the one, yeah. And at one time, for some reason, I don't on the other know. side of the theater where they have no, no, them. No, okay. I'm looking down, so okay, that's all right. I thought we were having some buses circle through here to drop off some kids for one reason or another at one time. There's the top. I think that was um, that, several plans ago. I think it changed. Well, I just think for us, when those other teams come, they come in and park, they just stop, they're done, they come in, and they're out of the way. So then they're not driving through a busy parking lot. So I was thinking that's something to do with the early drop off of the kids or shuttle or where we were going to stack them out and all of these. Oh, like our own kids, you mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know, are we doing it like some handicapped? Oh, yeah, we have to. Yep. Yeah, there will be handicapped spots here because we have to for code. So all the codes will be there. How about the suit and suit? I'm sure that Lindsay will come up with a group. <laughs> um, so. What would you like, Park Christian, when you're paying or something, you get a parking spot right here? Oh, there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Well, it's not a bad idea. Anyway, I do want you guys to look at it. So if we have any questions uh, or concerns, I'd like you to tell me kind of this week, because this is something we do want to get out yeah. to our families so they know and we've talked about it. So. Okay? Yeah. okay? That's that. What's that? Nicole approved of it. Oh, sweet. There good. we go. Yeah. I watched those Justin go Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Justin was, a, I, I just can't, I'll, I'll say this publicly. He was a major player in this. He was vital to the discussion. He shared a lot of insight. I really appreciated his inputs and the Clay County Sheriff's Department, too. It was good. Obviously, uh, Metro Cog, you know, they, they do it for a living. So that was kind of really handy to have them as well. So, yeah, that was good. Um, look up a phone. construction update. We walked uh, the building here today. I think that shared a lot. Um, um, and we have some meetings with Comstock uh, this week. And so um, we'll, we'll talk about that at another time. But uh, everything is going. Uh, Travis today, as you guys walk this building with me, uh, other than the media center might be right at the end. Otherwise, he feels the areas and spaces are uh, we're going to be OK. Dilworth, we know that the office area is going to be end of September. The gym's over there. We are going to get one. <laughs> we're having more discussions with them, but one, and we're hopefully both of them uh, by the start of the school year. The rest of the rooms and over there, Dennis is confident that they will be ready. I said, okay. So, so far, settled in the old gym over there. That's got to get torn out too. So they're coming next week or the week after they had it's either this coming Saturday or the Saturday after they're going to rip out that floor and the issue that we had with the new floor. Mm -hmm. And then they want to start putting the other they're one back, back in. And we're, that's what we're working on coordination because they won't be able to put in the new gym floor yet. 
because we have to take out some windows in the gym. Long story, but we, but I'm hopeful that they can just do the existing middle school gym right away then on the 8th. And that's what they're kind of talking about. So that one will be done. Yep. Maybe it's something um, we should try to do a tour. We do. I oh, think next time well, we should, do, or sooner if you want. I'm just look, looking. Next Monday is already the first. Like maybe next Monday night. We can. Just let's just mill about it, and then we can talk about it at the end. But if we're gonna have our board meeting here, I don't want to like. Like, we can do it, yeah, whatever you guys want to do. Anyway, and, just think about it. I was just looking at the calendar going, eh, it'd just be kind of good to see the update there. So, all right, LTMFM, here we go. Yes, yeah, so Lindsay just passed. I, you guys get yours. Uh, this is the LTFM. This is the 10 year plan. Uh, I made almost no adjustments to this because last year it was figuring out all the bonding and all the paying and all that and what we have moving forward. Um, this report, so we're going to approve this report. Tomorrow we can change it. It's just what it is. So it's to show that we do have a plan and that we're moving forward. A lot of this, as even LTFM, Sarah Miller from the state will tell you, it's significantly made up of projections, right? Mm -hmm. um, Roofing is coming. What the main part of this is, is when you have a building project coming up, when you have some big bonding thing or uh, some major projects over 100,000. Let's say we were going to, we didn't have a building project and we're going to slowly replace roofs. This could lay out that plan for the next 10 years. Okay, we're doing this one, we're doing this one. I have Tremco's report for our roofs. We have some things coming forward. It will get added to this but I haven't had a chance to go through it that closely yet. But so I'll just kind of take you through, this is, if you look at the first sheet, and I don't know if they're numbered, I'm sorry, the top sheet, you'll look down at line 12, debt services for existing uh, facilities and h and You'll look over to the right in 2023, it says a little over a million dollars. F24 is a million. And then at 26, that number just goes away, then 946, and then it's gone. This is funding that is from uh, the 2010 HVAC system. And then it also has money from this bonding that you did on this project. That This bonding project doesn't stop there because that goes on longer. And that's the 200,000, so down below, see the 220, 219? That's this new one that's going to continue on. Um, it's got all these pockets are getting thrown into here. And then this is the payoff. This is not the payoff. This is the incomes we're getting from those bonds to pay for these projects. Okay. Um, they put it all under LTFM, long-term facilities maintenance funding now, uh, which includes the health and safety dollars that we get funded from the state. It's anyway, I'll just leave it at that. Um, you, how long does that uh, line 16 How many years after the um, That goes to 2040, if I remember, because you passed it and it paid 20, paid 19, paid 20. I believe it goes to 2040. Was it? Uh, oh, that's right, because I think it was. I think it was. It was because remember years. when I got here, I was all shook up about yeah. paying it. We do have some relief coming um, in our expenditures. If something is dropping off. Yeah, it drops off. So that's the 2010 payoff. Yeah. That's going to drop off. So, okay, in, in all of these sheets, there's also an expenditures. And in there, so we're getting 671,000, 675,000. Okay. You can see that up there on line 10, initial revenue on that first page again. And then you can see what we're getting every year. That's our LTFM dollars. With our bonding, we're spending over 500 and some on the payment on the $9 million bond. So which if you, okay, I'm gonna find the sheet here, sorry. It's the expenditures. So if you look at the top, it'll say a 
allowable expenditures. So on the bottom of this one that has yeah. a M page four, the so fourth one in. If you keep them in order, yes, the fourth page one. Four. At the bottom there, so it says the total annual 10-year plan expenditures. You see that? 189,930. Okay. The number right above it says 154. Okay. That's what we've actually spent in 2022. So that's actual. So if you go all the way up, that was this last year. Okay. You, you notice in mechanical systems, we spent a lot of money, and that's why our custodial budget was a little high too. Some of that's with this project. Some of it was not a part of the project that we had to fix and update and go through some of that. So that's why that number is a little out of whack. If you look, out of our 670 some thousand dollars in 2023, we are going to get have left over after we make our payment, 137,425. You see that number down at the bottom? We are budgeting that we're going to spend 110,000. And notice those numbers about 5,000, 10,000, 25,000. This is our projection because we're only going to have 137. We thought we'll keep a little 20 or what is it, 17? If I could read 27,000 and a little bit of a savings there. Yeah. Well, the thought is, is because it, we're remodeling now, everything's going to be new. We shouldn't have that much stuff, hopefully, to. Yeah, so we yeah. are. It's going to be our roofs. Oh, okay. I have right. I have something to share with you after I met with Ehlers uh, last Thursday. It's they help schools with financing. I talked to them again today. There's going to be some other dollars available to us, oh. and I'm going to share with that after the board meeting, and it will be in a resolution in September. So the public will learn more about it. I'm just getting more information. Yep, it's a law change interpretation by bonding lawyers. It was brought to my attention last week, and so no new taxes for anybody, but there's some other authority that they've already that's passed that we have access to. And I'm going to share the details after because we have to go through some hoops to get the money. I'll explain that later. That's going to bridge our gap in our roofing. Minnesota School of Finance at its finest. What I guess I'm telling you with this, this is a good plan. We're going to have, it's going to be okay, and uh, this too shall pass. Um, I want to talk about getting our reserve job. <laughs> as do I. <laughs> it's, so, it's like the bone um, in my side. Yep. Yeah. Like someone pull it out. Yeah. Um, so we're going to stay within budget and make our bond payments. How's that? That's and, wonderful. And then, the community would uh, be happy to hear that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and the shortfalls that are out there with this building our buildings our number one issue is roofs and i got some good news the last uh end of last weekend today how we can access a little over a million dollars that's going to be a long way in our tranquil roofing report that i have to go through with you guys in the next months there you go All right. this this is again something we have to have at the board we have to have a resolution it's in here tonight um, if you have any questions, you can. Marcus and I can take you into the weeds a little bit. But everything after this year is all a projection anyway, because we're trying to figure out what's going to happen to our building, what do we need to do, and then you can modify it. Mm -hmm. It just shows that there is a plan. Okay. Okay. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Well, ten years ago, when it's on our roof, we're in pretty good shape. That's ten years ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We have a couple spots in this on this building. That need to be done asap, ASAP. they do because we have water leaking all over uh and so it's all right we got it there's a plan sweet ltfm and last one i have in here is the mde safe return to school um as part of the sr3 funding uh we have to continue doing these plans so i am going to meet with tracy uh she was out last week. We couldn't connect. Uh, I want to meet with her early this week so we can get that message out to parents so we can talk about that at the board level, too, if there's anything that we need to adjust or adapt based on the feedback we get from our families. Um, it's kind of a hoop now, I hope, that we're jumping through that should be easier than it has been in the past. Let's hope it continues that way. Um, 
So more to come on that as we discuss what's going to be. And I'll share it with you guys too on a weekly update. Hey, now with Tracy, here's what we're thinking on the survey. Okay. It's just some kind of check boxes for the state in order to move on and access your SR3 funds. So okay. that's it. Questions. <laughs> All right, hearing no questions, let's move on to 7.1. Approval of the regular uh, July 11th meeting. Do we have a motion? And I got David first. Nicole, you want a second? Sure. Nicole, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, consent agenda. Laura, claims and accounts. One minute. One minute. One minute. Will you just kindly say that one more time? <laughs> Wonderful. Should we okay. repeat it for the public? Just yeah, uh, one million seven hundred thirty thousand one hundred eleven and fifteen cents. Yeah, it's just so equity. I'm it's sorry. very equity. nothing on you, Laura. It's okay, just so this also, microphone right here. In, a, in your uh, the approve the file the audit for treasurer treasurer's monthly board report retirement of um, Jeannie Maltzness food service effective August thirty first twenty twenty two approve the resignation of Lori Morecastle health aid effective July eighteenth twenty twenty two approve the resignation of Katie Frisco elementary teacher effective the end of the twenty one twenty two school year approve the resignation of Carrie Henry high school teacher effective the end of the twenty one twenty two school year do we have a motion. Motion by Amy. Is there a second? Second. A second by David. Any questions or discussion? I for two comments just sir. Putting on one of the tables, what did we use like, the interpreter for? Is there any kind of small bills? Interpreter yep, bill. For the Moorhead bills that we had the interpreter for the bill. The month we built was it. Yep. So that happened actually with some summer school. Uh, we had to have an interpreter come in because one of our uh, students that qualified for that service needed to have some over the summer. Okay. Just one person said interpreter, it wasn't very much. Yeah, that was a small one, but you also had the other interpreters, the Morehead Public Schools, because we contract with them. Same. Yeah, that's the initials of the person. That needed the services that we, or no, I'm sorry, that was the actual person providing the service from the Moritz School. And yep, because of the amount of time and hours they were, we were using them. So, same thing, it uh, is required. We needed interpreters, so we, we, we contract with them for that service because we don't have that service. Yep, I asked that specific question also. <laughs> I said, what's up with the initials? Oh, that's the person that's the person doing that, performing the, the service. And it's required, it's, it's in their IEPs, and so we have to provide that service. Yep, yep. great question. So, um, Katie, we've known here for a little while. That's been posted for a while. Uh, that's been kind of quiet. Uh, I have a couple of other ideas rolling around in my head that I've listened with Wayne the part about, but I think, and so, um, what grade is she for third? third grade, um, she had an opportunity to advance kind of advanced position uh, at a neighboring school. Good for her. Great opportunity for her. I think we have one applicant right now. We have two. Okay. We have two. I know Wayne was going to reach out when we interviewed earlier in the year, uh, to see if any of those second or third, can said, we had a couple other good ones. He was going to reach out to them to see if they were still available. Um, so not a ton right now. The other one we just got over the weekend. So the last one there, uh, Carrie Henry, we just got that. So we are just we're just going to be posting it. Social studies. Yep. So opportunity for anybody out there. Probably better than one of the hardest middle schools Trying to find a map Sure. Some way we introduce people to Yeah. It's, the other one, we got one, and I don't know what happened to that. You know, the applicant they have for the. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, 
It's an issue, so interesting you bring it up. Uh, Commissioner Mueller is going to address that state of Minnesota about all the teacher shortages and principal shortages and superintendent shortages. Over 67 schools have a different superintendent starting next year. 67. Mm -hmm. And like 28 of them have no superintendent experience. But then it just, it's the same everywhere. So you can pick yeah. principals, you can pick teachers, you can pick. It's just a significant shortage, as we all know. We're short barrels right now, too. We're short in the kitchen right now. We are working on that, as I shared with you guys in my weekly update of what Rhonda is working with, and we're going to try to meet with them this week or next week to get some other help. Okay. Okay, we aren't right now, so I'm glad you brought that up, Brittany. I have... Um, um, Kayla shared with me the numbers from middle school, high school, from elementary, and all the visits. She feels confident and comfortable that we're going to start the way we're starting. And I have those numbers. They might be in my old office. They might be. <laughs> anyway, I have them. I have a sheet, and Katie can share them because she shared on an email too. Maybe I can get that back from her. Um, because I wanted to show you guys that because it's one of the things that we talked about before. Hey, if we're going to replace this position or not, so. I asked her to do that for me. She did. I have the numbers. And the numbers really, you know, numbers can change. I know that. But the numbers, uh, as she shared with me, we should be okay, especially with the two high school and middle school offices right next door. So if somebody needed to go help, Sarah right there, Sarah's got plenty of work with, with Tracy and Eileen and Katie, but she's right there too. So if we got into a stink, we have some people close by. So I'm, Fairly confident that we shouldn't have to. So, no, I'm glad you asked. What's that? It's a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we have a motion by Amy and a second by David. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, 9.1, we are tabling. We're going to move to 9.2, Coaches Activity Handbook. Um, this is to approve the first reading of the 2022-23 Coaches Activity Handbook. Do we have a motion? Oh. Motion by Nicole. Is there a second? Bye. Second by Brittany. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? 9.3, this is a non-certified contract for Anita Patton, here a professional, effective the start of the 2022-23 school year. Do we have a motion? Motion by Laura. Is there a second? Second by Amy. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 9.4, a non-certified contract for Lauren Summers. Uh, paraprofessional, start of the 22-23 school year. Do we have a motion? Motion by David. Is there a second? Second by Nicole. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 9.5, this is uh, for the 2022-23 uh, fee schedule. This is the second reading. It's in your packet. Um, do we have a motion? Motion by David. Is there a second? Second by Laura. Any questions or discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 9.6, this is... Um, to uh, approve the elimination of bus route 10 and bus route 14. Do we have a motion? Mm -hmm. Motion by Nicole, is there a second? Second by Amy. Any further questions or discussion? Yeah, I mean, it is what it is and we've made those adjustments and percentage wise. So, you know, when you start slicing and trying to give a route back and all that, this ended up I guess making the most sense for the group and uh yeah i mean I, the meeting was the meeting was a good conversation a good it was good talk so and they understood that we had to do something so yeah all right uh we have a motion and a second all those in favor say aye, aye. opposed motion carries 9.7 this is the long-term facilities maintenance resolution um, we'll get a motion and a second, and then we'll have Amy read the resolution. We have a, mo uh, we have a motion. Mm. Motion by Ronnie. Is there a second? Second. Was that Nicole or Brittany? Nicole? 
All right, Amy, do you have that resolution there? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, resolution to change the annual long term facility maintenance and your plan. Whereas a regularly scheduled meeting of the School Board of Independent School District 2164 was held at the DGF Community Group, Linden, at 6 o'clock p.m., July 25th, 2020. Whereas, pursuant to Minnesota Statute Section 123B.595, all public schools are required to annually update the district long term facilities maintenance tenure plan and submit the board approved plan to the Minnesota Department of Education. Be resolved by the School Board of Independent School District Number 2164 in Ruthland and Belton now as follows. The board hereby approves the revised district's long term facility maintenance tenure plan. The clerk is authorized and directed to submit a copy of the adopted resolution to the Minnesota Department of Education as soon as reasonably practicable after adoption, but in no event later than July 31st, 2022. The motion for the adoption of the resolution was moved by Ronnie Tang and seconded by member Nicole Green. Okay. All right. Um, so this is a roll call vote. So uh, signify yes or no, please, or aye or nay. Uh, Brittany? Aye. Cole? Aye. Ronnie? Aye. Myself? Aye. Amy? Aye. David? Aye. And Laura? Aye. All right. Resolution passes. All right. Um, next board meeting is Monday, August 8th. We'll be in the D DGF community room again, followed by the facilities and transportation committee meeting on August 8th. Um, and then I just want to point out we are uh, on August 11th. Just so the public knows, we are going to be having a um, work session as, as a school board here starting at noon or 12.30. I think we're still working on yeah. if we're going to have lunch or what we're going to do. We'll have further communication going on. And then we're going to follow with team building, uh, supper, and uh, with the admin team. So that's going to be happening August 11th. Is anybody interested in, like, next Monday night doing a tour in Glenville or in Dillard? Yeah. Thank you for saying that. I didn't say this in my report. I have the MDE MASA back to school conference on Monday, next Monday. Oh, uh, so we well, can do that. so here's the deal. We could still have it. I will be leaving the cities at three o'clock. I'm sure there'll be no traffic issues. Yeah. And so that puts me here by at least midnight. No, it's good. <laughs> So, yeah, next Monday, yeah, unless you want to do it without me. Well, Dennis will be there. We like you and your work. So, does, is anybody opposed to, like, Wednesday the 3rd? Or even later this week? Or, yeah. Later, yeah. I just think, like, some of the summer recs are still wrapping up this oh, week. Sure. How about when you're not going to be found by week yet? So don't. It might be swapping part of Okay. So should we try yeah, for the third? Yeah. Okay. How? What? What time works? Five fifteen. Five thirty. Five. Five. August third. Wednesday, August third. August third. Yeah. You good? You good? Five fifteen. We can do five fifteen. Five? Can you be there at five? David, what works for you? You can make five work? Okay. Five o'clock. Five p.m. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yep. August. August third. Um Brooke, can you send us out a meeting invite? Let's make sure we have Dennis on that. Yeah, Dennis too. Yeah. Okay. Also for the public watching, if anybody is still watching this. There's lots of great employment opportunities at our school district. We would love for you to come and work for us. Um, we have a lot of exciting stuff happening, so please reach out to the district office. They would be happy to assist you in application processes. So thank you all. All right, it is 7.15, meeting adjourned. Okay, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. You wanna turn that on? Thank you. Oh.